Today at 3 p.m., we will see Canada's population hit 40 million people, at the same time as the number of houses built is dropping 19 per cent. Wow. So where are we going to put everyone? The Honourable Minister of Immigration, Citizenship and Madam Speaker, I think it's very important that we don't start to believe that the solution to our housing challenges is to close the door to more newcomers. We need to use our immigration policies to help bring in the people who have the skills we need to help build more homes. I think all members in this House hopefully support continuing to integrate newcomers into our society, and we need to adopt policies to allow us to build more homes to ensure people don't just arrive here, but they're set up for success. This is something we've been working to over the last number of years with the National Housing strategy and with new policies that will have dedicated draws for skilled workers who have the talents that we need to build more homes for Canadians who have been here for generations and those who arrive in the future. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Homes, yet right. since this Prime Minister took office, the number of houses per capita in this country has dropped. The average mortgage payment is up 122 per cent. The average rent up over 100 per cent, the average down payment up over 100 per cent. That is his record of doubling housing costs after eight years of running deficits that drive interest rates up and funding local gatekeepers that block construction. Will they balance the budget to bring down interest rates and inflation and link dollars for cities to the number of houses complete? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm very happy to hear my colleague talk about working with municipalities. I'm happy to see that the tone is changing and they've decided to stop insulting municipalities. As a former municipal councillor in Montreal, we want municipalities to build more and that's what we're encouraging through the Housing Accelerator Fund for municipalities. And what the Leader of the Opposition is proposing is exactly what we said last year that we were going to do, so I'm glad that we inspired them. While the government pretends to plagiarize my policy mm -hmm. on removing gatekeepers, there's a very big distinction. They brought in this so-called accelerator. Since that time, housing construction has decelerated. It's down 19 percent uh, year over year, and in May it was down 30 three percent on an annual basis. So there, we're building less houses since this four billion dollar monstrosity came into place. Right. Our approach is to require the completion of homes before cities get the money. The Liberal approach is to fund promises. Why won't they fund results instead of promises? Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. We know the opposition leader's policy when it comes to housing. It was to do nothing. For 10 years, the Conservative government didn't invest a dime in housing, didn't prioritize or even talk about housing. They left it to every other level of government. What we did instead, Mr. S Madam Speaker, is to say that the federal government has to be a leader in housing. And what they've done is, frankly, come up with ideas that we've already been doing for years, Madam Speaker. Well, they insult mayors and, and throw slurs at them and talk about uh, how incompetent municipal levels of government are that are elected in their own right. We will stand up and get the job done. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. No, what we delivered was affordable housing. The average right. house cost, when I, was, when I was minister responsible, was $450,000. The, right. uh, today, it's well over $700,000. The average wow. Mortgage cost was fourteen hundred dollars. Now it's over three thousand. The average rent was a thousand. Now it's over two thousand. That's right. So you're, the, the, the member is right, though, that our programs cost far less to taxpayers. We spent far less to achieve far more. Absolutely. Housing was cheap. The way we can make it affordable again is by requiring cities get out of the way and let builders build. Why don't they bring in place a dollars for doors policy that gets things? The Honourable Leader of the, of the Government. Well, Madam Speaker, the Leader of the Opposition was very good at uh, making uh, those, those parody, those fake checks with the Conservative logos. But when it came to actually delivering action, it was 2.7 million people more in poverty than when they were in government that is happening today. They presided over the worst growth that had been seen since R.B. Bennett. So yeah, when the economy was down, when more people were in poverty, things were cheaper. That's true. As our economy is growing and booming and Canada is leading the world in growth, we have to meet the challenge of growth. Instead of having problems of, of, of falling apart, we have problems of growing. Those are good problems to have. We're rising to meet them. 
Madam Speaker, earlier this year, the Liberal Zone officials predicted a major decline in new housing construction thanks to inflationary spending, interest rate hikes, and labour shortages. Well, they were correct. Yesterday, we learned that new housing construction is down 23% from this time last year. That doesn't sound like a life-changing housing plan Canadians were promised by this government. So when will they admit that the billions and billions they are borrowing is actually making the housing crisis worse? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I agree with my colleague on one thing, and that is that Canadians all across the country are having a challenge finding the housing they need. Not only do we need to increase the supply, but we need to legislate on the right to housing. And I wonder if my colleague is, agree, is in agreement that his party should finally recognize housing as a human right. Madam Speaker, uh, we heard the housing minister yesterday just talk about how they're getting the job done. We've built more houses in the 70s than we're doing right now, and they've got this accelerator fund where they're basically promising money for municipalities that just promise to get the job done and aren't. So here's a question for you. Why don't they promise dollars for doors instead of promises that never get fulfilled? The Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, and I'm, I'm glad to see the Conservatives have a renewed interest in housing because for the 10 years while they were in government, they actually underspent and cut programming when it came to affordable housing. Let me just quote something. Housing insecurity is widespread and homelessness is on the rise. Oh, that's a quote from 2013, Madam Speaker. Let's change the topic and see what we're doing today. We've invested billions of dollars, refurbished and built hundreds of thousands of units, supported vulnerable Canadians with a Canada housing benefit. We're bringing forward the Housing Accelerator Fund to work with, in partnership with municipalities, to build more housing units for those who need it the most. Thank you. The Honourable Member for Lévis, Lotte-Pinière. Madam Speaker, the Canadian dream for a family is to have a house or a home, not to end up living with your folks. This dream is now out of reach because of the inflationary policies of this incompetent Liberal government, which keeps driving up construction costs. Canada needs over 100,000 new homes a year, and housing starts are down all across the country. Madam Speaker, as July 1st approaches, what does the Prime Minister plan to do to resolve this housing crisis as quickly as possible? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. Here on this side of the House, since we first took office in 2015, the National Housing Strategy was created, and that provides direct support to people who need housing. It will help encourage construction. We've invested historic amounts in housing through the municipalities, $1.5 billion for co-ops, Madam Speaker, and not just that, we're working on the right to housing because here on this side of the House, we believe all Canadians deserve a roof over their heads. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In addition to struggling to make ends meet due to inflation caused by this government's economic policy, Canadians are facing another problem. As you know, in Quebec, July 1st is moving day. This year, things are dramatic. Here's the history of an honest citizen from Trois-Rivières who was forced to camp out in the woods because of the lack of accessible housing. Richard Dufault, a 74-year-old man, cannot find a place to live. And here's what he has told TVA Nouvelle. I visited some 15 housing units, but I've never, find to, I've never been able to get a rental. No matter how many landlords I meet, they take my contact information, but they don't call me back. And if they do, they tell me it's rented. Trois-Rivières has one of the lowest rental vacancy rates in Quebec. To achieve a balanced market, CMHC has indicated that the vacancy rate must be around 3%. It's unacceptable for this to happen in Canada in 2023. Why is this government, which has been in power for eight years, letting down 